Well, with this movie, we take a look at our completed render. We've rendered the smoke out as part of the preceding movies working with advanced particle emitters. And here's what it looks like. We'll play it through once. Well, that looks okay, but gosh, I thought we were fading that thing out. What's going on? The animation you see preview when you're working with QuickTime doesn't display the transparency information the way you might expect, but it's all in there. And as we get towards the very end, we'll see the nature of these clouds kind of disappear or just turn into more of a gray type of setup. That's because they're totally disappearing. This black area is areas where nothing shows, or actually the background would show through. But let me show you how we use this now. Here's the file we've been working on. I'll save that. But now I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to import the movie we just made. Go down to the Import Movie option. We'll go back to where we were at in here. We created a separate little folder for smoke. And there's that smoke movie. I'll select that and open it. And we see it come in in the Layers palette as its own separate item, its own separate movie. Now let's come down to layer one. I'm going to grab a shape. I'm going to shift click to drag a circle. But now we can see that the circle is partly behind this little cloud element. If I go ahead and change the color of this to make that a little more obvious, now we can see that we have got a completely different look here. And if I render a single frame, then we see that the movie is showing nice levels of transparency as it you know, gets over this. Well, let's look at something else. I'm going to come back to our Layers palette, select the Movie Layer, and if we open the options or the settings for the layer, we don't have specific Movie Layer settings. We only have the same settings that we do when we're using an image. So you don't get any special movie controls or options like that. What happens is that this is just an image layer that has an image change over time. Well, let's reduce the size of this. Maybe we don't want something quite that big on the smoke layer. So we'll go ahead with the layer selection tool here. I'll change to the scale layer tool. We can bring that down. Let me come back to one and move it just a little bit. And if we scrub our timeline, we see that it fades away. It totally fades away. But then it starts repeating. Hmm, well that's the nature of movie files in Animation Studio Pro, and that is that they will play over time. They just kind of keep repeating, and we get a little flash right when that happens. So the way to deal with that is, uh, of course, when we get to about right here, I'm going to go ahead on the visibility line and click that, because we only want it to be apparent for this first part and then stop. I want it to be invisible after that. Let me delete that. So now after this point in time, it's gone. Well, now that we have one, we can use some interesting time saving capability. And that is we can go ahead and duplicate this layer and move it to somewhere else. We can duplicate it again move that layer somewhere else and we can actually change over time when you see these layers and when you have the start time for the layer the movie will start playing at that point in time that's really cool so now when I scrub the timeline we get multiple explosions going on but you'll notice that they're happening all at the same time so let's shuffle this a little bit this last one we worked with I'm going to go ahead and click the visibility frame there I'll select that and delete let me actually bring that back here. I'm going to delete that one. I've got my steps just backwards there for a second. So I'm going to start this one oh, about halfway through and then terminate it right there. So now when we scrub the timeline, that second one comes in a little bit later. So we can go ahead and phase these a little bit and make them so they don't start all at the same time when we don't see that similarity between them. We can come down to the smoke layer two. Say, oh, let's start you about now, yeah, just right in there, shortly after that. We'll move that out a couple frames. And when we scrub the timeline now, we see these different explosions happening and fading away. So if this red ball came into the scene and dropped, we could have a dust cloud come up. 
But there is an easy way to create very complex particle interactions by simply replaying a movie you make that has been exported into a PNG movie with alpha transparency. So you don't have to waste time doing re-renders with multiple complex particle emitters. Great way to save time using Anime Studio Pro.